Honestly, I didn't expect to hear myself saying these words, but welcome back to the simulator series. It's been quite some time since our last episode, but in today's episode, we're going to be fixing and touching up a bunch of little things. 90% of the things that we're going to be touching up today are related to GUIs, but in addition to fixing up the GUIs, we're going to also implement the auto rebirth game pass and setting, as well as making rainbow pets purchasable with Robux. And there may also be some other minor changes as well. With all that being said, let's hop directly into Roblox Studio. Now, the first thing that we want to do is make the adjustments to all the GUIs that we want to change. In one of the more recent previous episodes, I showed you how to use a new UI scaling method that involves the UI scaler script inside of the starter player scripts, as well as it requires us to make our UIs kind of a specific way. And the big difference between the method that we're using now versus what we started with is that the method that we're using now actually requires us to use offset in the sizing for a lot of different things. Whereas when we originally started the series, we were pretty much only working in scale. Then when we we implemented the new UI scaling method, we actually kind of forgot to update some GUIs and different components. So that's where we're going to go back through today and fix all of them. Now, I'm not going to lie. The changes that we're going to be making right now are quite repetitive. So I'm going to be going through them pretty quickly. Before I actually make those changes, let me kind of show you how we can figure out which UIs actually need to be updated. The method that I use is emulating our device to a very smaller size. So we'll just go ahead and say the phone, for example, and then start up our game. Then once we're inside of our game, we can actually go ahead and like open up a UI and we should almost instantly be able to see an issue with the UI. So for instance, let's open up the rebirth UI. And when we open up the rebirth UI, we can clearly tell that the buns inside of this UI are extremely small and way too small for us to even look at or see let alone click on. Another example is the shops UI. We can see the buns on the side are kind of appearing weirdly. And if we go to the boost section, then we can see that these buns are appearing a little bit too small as well for us to even be able to read. So that's the method that I use for finding what UIs we still need to make adjustments to. And of course, when I do pretty much anything inside of a video, I think I actually found all the UIs that we do need to update. But of course I could be wrong. Maybe I forgot some in this episode and maybe I left some out. And if I did and you recognize some of them, feel free to leave a comment down below to help all of us out because because I and everybody else would really appreciate that. But with all that being said, let's now go through all of the UIs and begin updating them. So the first one we're going to start with is the jumps shop. I'm going to go ahead and enable this so that we can actually see it. Then inside of the frame, we're going to go ahead and look inside of the container and we'll go ahead and make this template visible. Now that we've made that template visible. Let's go ahead and look at the size property of the UI grid layout. And the size of the button already looks a little ugly on our screen because we're emulating our device size. And that wasn't the original size that we created this at. So for the size, what we're going to say is zero comma 100 because we want to give it a hundred width on the offset. And then for the Y axis on the scale, we'll of course say zero, but then for the height or the offset of the Y axis, we'll go ahead and say 100. So it's 100 by 100, which makes this a perfect square. And now that bun is looking good. And because we're using offset instead of scale, the templates will now appear nicely on all device sizes. So then what I'm going to do is go ahead and set the visibility of this template to false so that we no longer see it. And then I'll set the enable property of the screen GUI back to false so that we no longer see that either. Now, that's essentially what we're going to do for every single one of the GUIs that we're going to make this change to. Instead of enabling every single one of those GUIs and then making the templates visible so that we can actually directly see the changes that we're making, I'm just going to go through every single GUI. We'll go through each of the parts that we actually need to make the change to and update the size of, but we're not going to really see those visual changes on our screen because there's just no point in enabling the GUI, then making the template visible and then actually make the change because I already did this before recording this episode. So I don't know, feel free to call me lazy, but I just don't feel like going through all that work to show you the change actually has been made when we know it definitely is being made. So the next GUI that we have is the pet bank. Inside of this frame, we have a container. And of course, inside of the container, we have a UI grid layout. Now in the offset, we're going to change this to 75 on the X and 65 for the Y. After the pet bank, we're going to go to the pet boosts. Inside of this frame, we have the container and then we have our UI grid layout. For this, we're going to go with 575 on the X axis and 150 on the Y. We then have the pet crafting. And inside of this frame, of course, we have a container and then our UI grid layout. Now we're actually going to keep the X one as the scale. But for the Y, we're going to use offset here. So we'll go ahead and delete the scale from that. And then we'll go ahead and set 100 for the offset in the Y axis. Then we're going to look at the pet enchanting GUI. And inside of here, we have the auto frame, which has a container frame. And then inside of that is where our UI grid layout is. We're going to go ahead and set this to 180 pixels on the X offset and then 30 pixels on the Y offset. Then we'll go to the pet index GUI. Inside of the frame, we have the container frame with the UI grid layout. But now inside of this template, we actually have another UI grid layout. And this is the one that we want to adjust first. So we're going to go with 75 in the offset for the on the X axis 
and then 65 in the Y offset. Then for the UI grid layout inside of the container, we're only going to adjust the Y and we're gonna use the offset for this which we're gonna to set to 75. We'll then go to the pet inventory. Inside of this frame, we have the holder frame, which has the container frame, and then we have our UI grid layout. Then in the X offset, we're gonna go with 75, and in the Y offset, we're gonna go with 65. We'll then go to pet rainbow. Inside of the frame, we're gonna start with the make container, which has a UI grid layout, which we'll use 75 in the X offset, and then 65 in the Y offset. Then we'll go down to the view container, and for the UI grid layout here, we're gonna go with 150 on the X offset and then 400 on the Y offset. We'll then go to the Rebirth GUI. Inside of here, we have the frame, which has a container frame inside of it. And then we have the UI grid layout. Now in the X offset, we're gonna go with 350. And on the Y offset, we're gonna go with 65. We'll then go to the Rebirth shop. And inside of this frame, we have a buns frame, which has a UI grid layout inside of it. And we're gonna go with 80 on the X offset and 80 on the Y offset. Then we'll go inside of the container and adjust this UI grid layout. And we'll go with 540 on the X offset and 120 in the Y offset. Now, actually, I kind of messed up on the buns a little bit. We can make them a little bit larger, so we'll go with 90 on both the X and the Y offsets. We'll then go to the shop GUI, which inside of this frame, we'll start with the buns frame, which has a UI grid layout. For these buns, we'll say both 80 in both the X and the Y offset. Then we'll go to the boost frame, and inside of this container, we have a template frame, and inside of this template frame, we want to actually adjust the size of the buttons frame. So rather than going with scale, we're going to go with offset, and in the X axis, we'll go with 180, and in the Y axis, we'll go with 150. We'll then go to the trade GUI, and inside of the trade frame, we have the self and the target container. We'll go ahead and update the UI grid layout size here, which on the x-axis will go with 75, and on the y-axis will go with 65. Then we'll go to the target container and set this to be the exact same thing as well, so 75 and 65. Then we want to take a look at the teleport GUI, and if we look at a GUI above it or below it, those GUI should have UI scales inside of them. Let's go ahead and duplicate the UI scale and drag it into the teleport screen GUI, so that now the teleport screen GUI will actually scale with all devices. And now those are pretty much all of the GUI changes that we actually have to make. Next, what we're gonna do is implement the logic for what should happen when you click on this plus icon next to our currency label. And what we actually want to happen is for the shop GUI to appear and for the clicks frame to be visible to the player so that they're able to purchase some clicks. Now, to do all this, what we're gonna do is go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, inside of the GUI folder, inside of the currency folder, and then we'll go ahead and open up the currency script. Now, between our player GUI and the GUI variable, we're gonna go ahead and create another variable, which is gonna be called shop GUI, and that's gonna be equal to the player GUI. Then we wanna wait for a child, which is called shop. After that, we wanna create another variable, which is called shop frame, and that's equal to the shop GUI dot frame. Then what we're gonna do is scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the script, and we wanna listen for the buy clicks button to be clicked on. So we'll say dot mouse button one click, we'll go ahead and connect that to an anonymous function, and then whenever the mouse button is clicked, what we would like to do is display the shop GUI UI. So we'll go ahead and say shop GUI dot enabled equals true. Then we want to make sure that the shop frames visibility is set to true as well. And then inside of the shop frame, there is a frame called clicks, which we also want to set the visibility to true as well. Now that we have all of those displayed, another thing that we need to do is hide some of the other frames, which could possibly be displayed as well inside of the shop frame. So inside of the shop frame, there is a frame called boosts, which we would want to set the visibility not to true. Instead, we want to set that to false. In addition to the boosts, we also have the game passes frame. And and then we have two more frames. We also have spins, and then we also have pets as well. So we'll go ahead and make sure that none of those frames are being displayed, and we'll only make sure that the GUI is enabled, as well as the shop frame and the clicks frame being displayed. And that's actually all that we have to do. So now, whenever we click this button, the shop GUI will be open and displayed to us. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make rainbow pets purchasable with Robux. And what I mean by this is when players put their pets inside of the rainbow machine, we want to go ahead and sell a developer product, which players can purchase to go ahead and skip the time that it would take for the pet to actually finish. So to do this, we want to go ahead and create a developer product. We can do that by going into our game settings, going into the monetization tab, scrolling down to developer products, creating a brand new one. Let's go ahead and rename this. I'm going to rename this to be called Rainbow Pet Time Skip, and I would recommend that you use the same name as me, or at least make sure that you remember the exact name that you set for the name. And then you can set whatever the price is that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and say 99. Then I'll go ahead and click save. Then we want to reopen up the game settings, go back down to monetization, find where that developer product is that we've just created, which is all the way at the bottom for me, and then click on the three dots and select copy ID to clipboard. We're going to want to use that ID in the future, so that's why we're going to go ahead and copy it to our clipboard. Next, what we're going to want to do is update the shop config module. So inside of the replicated storage, we have the configs folder and inside of here is where we have the shop module script. Now inside of here, we have the products variable 
variable, which we're going to go all the way down to the very bottom of this table. And after eggs, we're going to go ahead and add a comma. And then we're going to go ahead and create another key value pair. And for the key, we're going to go ahead and say other products. And for the value, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new table. Now inside of this table, we'll go ahead and create another table. Then we'll specify the ID of the developer product that we're adding to here. Then we'll use a comma. And then we'll go ahead and specify the name of this as well. And remember, I use the name Rainbow Pet Time Skip. But if you use something different, then you want to make sure that you update that correctly here. Now that's actually all that we have to do inside of this module script. So we can go ahead and close out of that and collapse the replicated storage. Next, what we want to do is update the shop on the server side in order to implement this developer product. So we're going to go inside of the server script service and then we'll open up the shop server script. Now we're going to go all the way down to the reward egg function. And beneath this, we're going to go ahead and create another function, which is going to be called reward other. This is going to have the same parameters. So it's going to be the player as a player and then the product ID as a number. Now, the first thing we want to do inside of here is go ahead and get the index from this product ID. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable called index, which is going to be equal to shop config that get product index from ID. And then we'll go ahead and pass through the product ID. After that, we want to go ahead and get the product info. And to do that, we'll of course use the shop config. We'll go inside of products. We'll go inside of other products. And then we'll go ahead and index that with the index. Now that we have that, we want to go ahead and get the player's profile. And to do that, we go ahead and use the player data. We go inside of the profiles and then we index that with the specific player. Of course, if we don't get the player's profile, then we want to go ahead and return n to stop the function right there. After that, we want to use the product info to check if the name of the product that the player has purchased is actually the rainbow pet time skip product. So we're going to create a variable called is rainbow time skip. And to set this variable, we're going to check if the product info dot name is equal to rainbow pet time skip. Now, if it is, then what we're going to do is we want to actually iterate through all of the rainbow pets that the player currently has queued up. So we'll say for UUID comma info in profile dot data dot pet rainbow do. Then we're going to do is update a property of the info table. So we'll say info and the property that we want to update is called rainbow time. And then what we're going to do is simply just set it to one second in the future. So we'll say OS dot time plus one that will cause the pet to instantly finish becoming rainbow. And then we also need to make sure that we replicate this down to the client. So we want to go ahead and use a remote event inside of the pets folder, which is called rainbow pet. So we'll go ahead and fire that off. We want to fire that to that specific player and pass through the new info of their pet inside of the pet rainbow table. Now, at the very end of this function, what we finally want to do is go ahead and return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted. Then what we want to do is come down to the purchase product function and we're going to go ahead and update this right above the else statement. What we're going to do is say else if then we're going to go ahead and check if the product type equals other products. And if it does equal other products, then what we're going to do is go ahead and return reward other and we'll go ahead and pass through the player as well as the product ID. So now whenever this product is actually purchased, this will go ahead and call the reward other function, which will then go ahead and update all of the rainbow pets to no longer be cute. And with that being said, we're finished with updating this script so we can go ahead and close out of this and collapse the server script service. The next thing that we want to do is actually update the pet rainbow GUI on the client side because we need to implement when the player clicks on the purchase developer product one, then we need to go ahead and actually prompt that player to purchase that developer product. So to do this, we're going to go inside of the starter player inside of the star player scripts, inside of the GUIs folder, instead of going inside of the currency folder this time, we're actually going to scroll all the way down until where we see pet rainbow. Now inside of the script, what we want to do is scroll all the way down to about line 156, where we left this comment that says buy dev product. And what we're going to do is replace that comment with the marketplace service. We'll then use the prompt product purchase method. We'll pass through the player. And then we want to actually pass through the product ID, which remember we copied down to our clipboard earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. If you forgot that, then you can go ahead and open up your shop config to see what it was as well, or go to your game settings, whichever works for you. But now that we've done that inside of here, whenever the button is clicked, it'll go ahead and prompt the player to purchase this. So with that being said, that's going to be it for inside of here. So we can go ahead and close out of that script. Next, what we're going to do is implement the auto rebirth game pass as well as the setting. Now we're going to implement this system on the server side. So inside of the server script service, we want to go ahead and open up the rebirth module script. Towards the top of this module script, we want to go ahead and create a variable for two new configs. First, we want to create a variable for the settings config. And in addition to the settings config, we also want to create a variable for the shop config as well. Well, then beneath the rebirth table, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new function, which is going to be part of the rebirth table. And it's going to be called auto rebirth loop. 
and it's not going to have any parameters. Now inside of here, we're going to go ahead and create a while true loop. And then we're going to say task.wait1 so that this loop runs every single second. Then we're going to use a pcall and create an anonymous function inside of here. The reason that we're using a pcall is so that all the code inside of here is the actual logic, which is going to handle what needs to happen for a player to automatically rebirth. And if any errors occur inside of here, that normally would make the while loop break. But because we're putting all that code and logic inside of a pcall, if any errors occur inside of the pcall, that the pcall will essentially catch that and the while loop will continue to run as it always normally would. Anyways, what we want to do inside of here is we're actually going to loop through all the players profiles that are currently in the game. So we'll say for player comma profile in player in player data dot profiles do. Then we're going to create a variable called data, which we can access by saying profile dot data. After that, we want to check if the player owns the game pass or not. And we can do this by using the shop config because inside of there we have a does player own game pass function and the game pass that we want to check for is called auto rebirth. And then we're going to go ahead and pass through the player's data. Now, if the player does not own the game pass, then we're going to go ahead and say return n to stop the function right there. After that, we want to check if the setting is enabled. So we'll create a variable called is setting enabled. And to determine if the setting is enabled or not, we can use the settings config. And then we'll go ahead and use the is setting active function and check for the auto rebirth setting. And then we'll go ahead and pass through the player's data once again. Now, of course, if that setting is not enabled, what are we going to do? We're going to say return n to stop the function right there. Now, actually, luckily, I call myself, I made a mistake. We don't want to say return n. Instead, we want to say continue n for both of these because continue means that we'll iterate to the next profile. Whereas if we were to return, that would actually stop the entire for loop right at that player. So that's why we want to say continue so that we go through all of the players. Players. Now after that, we want to create a variable called max rebirth, and we now want to calculate the max amount of rebirth that the player could purchase. We can do this by using the rebirth config, and we'll use the get max rebirth function, passing through the player's current rebirth, so we'll say data.rebirth, and then we'll also pass through the amount of clicks that the player has as well, just like that. Then we'll go ahead and actually rebirth that player that amount of times, so we can do this by saying rebirth.rebirth, and then we'll go ahead and pass through the player as well as the max rebirth to that function. And now that we've ran all that logic inside of here, we're actually fully finished with creating this function and now we need to use it. Now, where are we going to use it? Well, let's scroll all the way down to the very bottom of our script and towards the very bottom, we want to say task.spawn. We're doing this because we're using a while loop and when we call a while loop, task.spawn will prevent that while loop from yielding this script and preventing the future code from actually running. So inside of our task.spawn, we want to go ahead and call the auto rebirth loop function just like that. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and close out of this module script and go into our game to test all of these things out. Okay, so now that I'm in the game, currently we can see that I have 204 rebirths and I had to get to 36k before I can rebirth once again. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy 510,000 coins and we should see them instantly my rebirths have actually increased. So we can see that the auto rebirth is working correctly. In addition, let's go ahead and click on the plus icon next to our currency labels and we can see that the shop GY is now displayed to us as well. Then let's go ahead and test out pet rainbowing. So now that I have some pets, I'm going to go ahead and try to make one of these rainbow. Now we can see, let's go ahead and try to purchase this developer product and we can see that after we purchase that developer product, we're instantly able to go ahead and claim this. And just like that, we claim that rainbow pet. So that is working perfectly. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you did enjoy, make sure you smash the like button. Please leave a comment down below, letting other people know that it did work. I and they really do appreciate it. It helps everyone out. And as usual, if you want to get access to all the scripts and the game file that we made during this episode, as well as a ton of other assets, you can visit monster.dev or my Patreon, linked down below in the description to both of these. You can gain access to a ton of assets to easily create your next Roblox game, as well as support me in creating all the content that I create. Anyways, with all that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.